Good morning, Mandy. Good morning, Tessie from England. How are you? Wonderful. I'm wonderful from Switzerland. <laughs> oh, wow. Mind you, we got the sun as well today, so I'm just so happy. <laughs> yes, the, well, here it's just... The weather is all over Europe. It's just such a blessing, isn't it? You really oh my God, it is. That's the one good thing to come out of COVID. I think the world has become better and the birds are out singing. It's amazing. I love it. It's really wonderful. And it's, yeah, yeah exactly. As you said, you know, I, I normally put a screen behind my videos, but the weather is so nice that I rather share that than putting a, a, a fake screen behind my face. When you so, have views um, like that, why not? <laughs> exactly. So for the people who do not know Mandy yet, Mandy and I, we met because of social media. Mandy is quite involved in yeah, the biggest institutions you can imagine. You speak currently all the time at the UN, the World Economic Forum, you name it, you have been there. Uh, and so over Twitter, you have quite a following and you really, yesterday you were on Female Quotidien uh, with Shelley from the US. Yeah. And it's Amazing. just really all over the place, but it all comes together to one cause, which is really making this world a better place. And yeah. you're really an inspiration to many people. So we got in touch and now you're here with me on Zoom o'clock. Thank you so much. It's a great honor to be here as well. And um, I love some of the work that you have been doing as well. So I just said to Shelley yesterday, you know what, when women come together, we can really change the world. Exactly. And it's really about empowering one another and not yeah. creating competition between one another. I think that is so important yeah. um, that women understand that because still today, and I'm sure you agree with me, there's a lot of issues between women not supporting each other as they should entirely. It's really quite sad, really, because it should be about... Um, you know, there's enough work out there for everyone. There's enough opportunities for everyone and everyone builds their own relationships, Tessie. So like I will have a different relationship with Shelley or with Fomzile, you will have your own different relationship. And, you know, if you treat people with respect and you value everything everyone brings to the table, um, then the world can be a better place. And I, I just move away from negativity. I don't believe in being surrounded by people who want to cut throat or do shortcuts to success because actually you can't climb a ladder with your hands in your pocket you know it takes a lot of time and guts to and effort and blood sweat and tears to do that absolutely yeah and it's important to say because a lot of people just see the outcome and say oh it must come easy to that person and i always mm -hmm. say no just because it looks easy doesn't mean it has been easy no. You know, we, we work day and night and weekends and holidays and... Exactly. You know what? And I think COVID has made it even worse. So whereas the weekends were luxuries and you could split them. And, but I think like you, you and I and other people who are in the same kind of field, we travel all over the world. We do a lot of work. And it's not like you do a nine to five, you work anytime. And, and because we have friends and connections all over the world. So you're working, you know, all around the clock sometimes. And um, yeah, it is what it is. Absolutely. So how are we going to do our Zoom o'clock today will be a little bit different just because your CV reads like, like an adventure novel. It's just so impressive and I'm really, really honored to have you here today. Um, and, and I will definitely put in the YouTube video, I will put all your bio and I will put all of your links for people to explore Mandy in its fullest. Um, so what I thought we are doing today is kind of like a little game. Um, I will pick some parts of your CV. And I will give you, we will choose three topics. I will okay. give you one minute per topic to say what's the issue, yeah. what the action you took is another minute, and one minute <laughs> on what is yeah. the outcome. So it's a little okay. bit, it's I a, like this, I like this. This is good. This is, um, you're making it good. It's good to have an interview like this. I like it. It's exactly. cool. We're going, it's like, it's a, like a fireside chat, but in an, ele in an elevator kind of thing. Love it. So, Love and it. we're going to do this three times. Fine, it's all good. <laughs> Hopefully by the third time I'm going to crack this. Come on, it's all good. Come on, I'm ready for this. Bring it on. on. We're ready to go. Come on, we're ready to go. So, Mandy, you have worked in the House, well, you have spoken in the U.S. House of Representatives for the third year in a row. Why? Yes. Do you know what? It was um, the first time I got invited. I thought it was a great opportunity, great privilege. And then when I got there, I realized that there were so many things in America that um, women's rights, even though it's one of the most successful and if the richest country in the world, but women are still fighting for equality to be equal pay, still fighting domestic violence, still tackling um, 
issues around getting a seat at the table and America still doesn't have a female president so they really have got a lot of work to do around gender equality so I ended up going for the first year and I it was a great honor great privilege and I was just overwhelmed and so excited to be speaking in Congress and being able to talk about some of my work and talk about um, policies and everything else and then I got invited back the second year, which I thought, wow, this is just amazing in the third year. But now I just had an invitation for the fourth year in a row, but it depends whether we come out of the lockdown and I can fly. But I just realized that um, the Americans like people who are honest and authentic. And I think if you're very straight talking, you tell them how it is and you don't sugarcoat things, people respect you. So then I realized one of the things that I want to achieve is that actually I need to empower women in America. You need to show them a lead from the front. So that was what I wanted to do. So the outcome was, was actually building a tribe in America to tackle the issues of um, abortion rights, reproductive health rights, talking about violence, talking about women empowerment, talking about gender equality. And people are saying to me, but America's like so, you know, leading the way and everything else. But yes, they are in certain areas. But when it comes to women, women sometimes are left so behind Tessie. So that was one of the reasons and it, I just ended up there and I keep getting invited back. It's a great honor, great privilege. I don't take it for granted, but what I do use is use it for change. I make those platforms and I take other people along with me. I make sure other people get a seat at that table. So it's not just about me turning up and talking about my work. I actually need to bring other people along who can tell their story and American women to tell you the issues that are affecting them because actually that has more impact. So when you meet change makers, so that was my aim and my outcome is that I can meet um, elected um, members and sort of educate them about the issues that are affecting them that they can take our policies that are affecting women and make them law. So that's what I did in the UK. And then I've managed to do that globally. And I, it's a great honor and a great privilege. Wow, that's really impressive. So when you say, just as a kind of like a side question, when you say um, making an issue, well, creating a new policy for the UK, for example, what has yeah. been one of the policies you have been drafting? Okay, so I started campaigning on early child forced marriage and I did work around people with disabilities and impairments because if you ever get to read my story, you'll know that actually I started campaigning on disabled people's rights before women in general. And um, I started campaigning with a few other people like South or Black Sisters and, and uh, ICRO and uh, Khan Navarro. There were some organizations, there was like three or four women who came together and we campaigned and lobbied government. And we said that there is, you know, within the Asian community where I come from, there are some great things and we are using Britain as a great country to, because I'm born and raised here, it gives you so many opportunities. But actually, there are some real out of date practices in our community. And I lobbied government. It was at Tony Blair's time. And what we did, we ended up creating the forced marriage unit. It's the only unit in the world still. And they support, you know, nearly 1500 people a year. And, you know, that's a great legacy because it's like 15 years on, um, forced marriage is a criminal offence in the UK. Um, now we have done education with social workers, teachers, with the courts, with the police and everyone to recognise the signs. So, you know, it was something that I'm really passionate about and you can't just do it and you think, oh, well, I've done this now. Great. I've achieved what I have because actually what happens is by doing that and then I go to Africa and Asia and other countries, you realize that actually the children who are being forced into marriage are even younger, Tessie. They're like five, six year olds or seven or eight year olds or as soon as a girl has her period at 10 or 11, they think she's ready to be married and she's not educated. So you know, I kind of took it upon myself to work with all the big organizations like UN Women and Girls Not Brides and Plan International and so many other organizations over the years and tackle this issue. And I realized that you cannot do things on your own. You need to bring people around the table, the right people around the table, and you have to lead and you have to listen to everyone, listen to the challenges, but actually you all have the same vision. So what I realize is there's no I in team. It comes where we are we together. And it's so important that, um, you know, that you keep banging those doors because knocking on government doors is not easy because actually they don't want to listen sometimes. But you know what? If you continue to see it, things will happen. Wow, that is so, so vital. I, I just had a Zoom o'clock as well 
which will be published soon about uh, FGM and also FGM, female genital mutilation yeah. in the UK and Luxembourg and all around the world. So definitely I will connect you with her as well. But yeah. when you say then, just another side question. Sorry, it's so interesting and it's yes, thank a you. topic. Specifically because these practices are not just practiced in developing countries, as people say, oh, it's an African problem. No, it's not. No, it isn't. No, it's, it's not. Okay. And when you say, because obviously in the UK, you can't get married when you're six. So it's a no. little bit safer for a child in the UK yeah. than in African states or in any other Asian country yeah. that they do practice that as well. However, when you say you educate police, for example, on the signs of a forced marriage in the UK, what does that look like? Okay, I'll give you, I can tell you what that looks like. So sometimes there's, um, you might get, get, get getting called to a home where there's a lot of increase in domestic violence. We know that whether you're white, British or any other nationality, a woman will stay in an abusive relationship at least 30 odd times before she will really leave that home. And sadly, within some cultures, there's a, a code of honour, which is called Izzet, where, you know, the family will step up and kind of turn a blind eye to abuse. And children have been told that actually, when you grow up, we're gonna pick your husband. And you know what's really sad is that uh, siblings and grandparents and other members of the family will join into this. And even though they may love their daughter or their son, they feel like because their child is becoming uh, westernized or they're dating somebody from a different religion or a different caste or their child is LBGTI and we want to uh, control them then we do we just and it's just it's just shocking and we should not be having this but what we do with the police then is actually get them to spot the signs we get them to look at this if you've been to a home around domestic violence um, you know, has there been any other signs? Is a child being pulled out of school? It's about educating um, social workers to spot the signs. So if a child has gone out of school for a while, um, you know, you need to sort of call it out and say, well, why hasn't Mandy come back to school? And you know, at the moment, I know that you're teaching at home and you've got your children at home, Tessie. But you know what worries me is right now, there are so many children, home is not a safe place. Mm. They are victims of abuse and the perpetrator and their abusers are living with them and amongst them. What worries me now more than ever is that young girls have not gone to school now for three or four months around the world. And, you know, their parents are putting them under pressure and duress and kind of drip, drip, drip every day to say, well, you're going to marry so-and-so and they're taking away your internet, they're taking away your phone, they're controlling you. And we need the police to look at that as psychological, emotional abuse when somebody has been locked in the bedroom, you know, against their will, or a child has been kidnapped and been taken out of the country. So the police has a lot of roles. There's some lots of legislation that they can use. And now forced marriage is a criminal offence in the UK, but I know it isn't around the world. But it's about sharing intelligence and it's about working with people to address those real issues. Wow. That is really, really interesting. And it is, it's scary and it's just horrific, isn't it? Um, yeah. definitely, well, I would love to talk to you a bit more about that offline and yeah. everyone, well, people who are listening to this, I want to hear more, get in touch with me and I put you in touch with Mandy. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Thank you. Mandy. So, um, let me see what I choose next. Uh, you're loving this game. <laughs> yeah, there's really, so you say that you work a lot with the UN as well. So you're yeah. often in Geneva. Mm -hmm. What is your work with the UN? What is the issue? What have you done, the action, and what was the outcome, um, and in which country? Okay, so I've done a lot around women's rights and supported um, UN women, and I've done a lot with um, the Refugee Council as well, and we're looking, and, and at the moment I'm working um, on a project around helping with um, refugees and asylum seekers and migrants who have come to Britain. So it's about making sure that people um, who are fleeing um, refugee camps, the most vulnerable, that their needs are met. So um, this year would have been a very important year for women for the Beijing 25, but actually due to COVID-19, all the events have been cancelled. We were due to, next week due to be in Paris and we should have gone to Mexico. None of those things have happened. CSW have been cancelled. So what I've done is I've ended up going on many, many panels over the years to talk about gender equality, talk about migrant women, talk about violence against women, and talk about early child forced marriages, what I've been interested in and supporting um, the UN um, and everyone else um, around the world on that issue. And I think over the years now, um, 
I'm taking other people on to the seats as well. And I feel like that I'm in a very position of privilege and I've been able to um, work along with people like from Zile and other people globally around tackling um, real issues that are affecting women around gender equality, around equal pay. And even when I went to Davos this year and um, flew into Zurich, so it's amazing where you are. And um, it was just really interesting to sort of look at some of the real issues that are affecting women. And what I've realized is that um, I have an amazing network of people around me. I'm able to bring people together and address the real issues of around gender equality, early child force marriage and violence against women and keep it on the radar and keep it on the agenda and talk about those issues. Because actually we have 10 years to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And um, I've been very lucky because actually I've spoken not just in um, New York or Geneva or um, in Bonn or Vienna. I've been so blessed to have been able to go all over the world and speak about this issue, not just with the UN, but actually at the Hague, at the European Parliament and the House of Lords and the Commons in the UK and Harvard and Yale and so many other amazing platforms. And what I feel like you have to do is, and you know me, I'm known as the woman lifting the next generation off the sticky floor, but actually we need to educate young men and women and pull them up the ranks and make sure they have a seat at the table, that actually we listen to those social issues that are affecting them. So things that are affecting me 20 years, 30 years ago, they still are issues, but there are new pressures for young people. Social media is amazing because we've connected and we've become friends, but what's happened is, um, it also has a danger side to it where young people are sending photographs on Instagram, people are being groomed online, people are being exploited online. So we need to look at addressing those issues as well. So I'm doing a lot of work and been approached to help with Silicon Valley right now around um, tackling bias in AI. So you know what, life is um, phenomenal at the moment. So thank you. Wow, that's incredible. So when you say you, you, know, you have worked with Harvard and all of these others before we're running out of time, um, what was one of the key achievements there where you say we created that community or we created that charity or company or group? Uh, what, what came out of all of these discussions and all of these talks that you had? Just one example. Um, what I've realized is that actually you create movements in universities and you know with getting people to become change makers and take responsibilities so actually they become advocates they spot signs of their friends from different communities who have not come back who may have gone off and is now bleed who might be a victim of fgm so we're spotting the signs and young girls are now becoming you know advocates and change makers in universities and colleges around the world supporting each other so we've created a legacy and a movement of sisters coming together so which is phenomenal and next generation just coming through somehow is there somewhere where people can look it up for example if there's young girls listening to this who are at university yeah they can come to me and i will connect them to their own countries because actually we can connect them to wherever it depends whether there's a, a chapter of the un in um, local chapters with them or whether there are um, other groups going on through mogul with uh, tiffany tam where, who does a lot of things around the universities around the world or whether it's um with Shelley with her movement as well. So actually it depends on where the people are because it's um, some people come to you with lots of different requests and things like that. And it's just about making sure that I signpost and support people. People can follow me on social media, on LinkedIn if they want to, and I'm happy to um, answer any questions as well, Tessie. I'll oh, share the link with you. Thank you so much. That is so useful because uh, some of my audience, they're very engaging and they get back to me and they say, oh, how can I do this? So this is really yeah. useful because obviously, you know, the empowerment of women, but also to make this world a better place and make our society stronger by yeah. educating young boys and young girls is definitely at the heart of a lot of individuals I know. And having someone like you uh, at the click of a hand available for <laughs> advice and guidance is just an incredible resource. So thank you so much for that. We have run out of time. I'm just I know we have, it's been brilliant. To a worldwide TV, you do TV appearances, you know, you, uh, you do quite a few programs as well in the area of human rights um, and social justice. And yeah, you have a TEDx talk that you did as well. Um, so yeah. Oh my God, you know what? I had to change that 10 minutes before I went on air. So I was like, oh my God, but you know what? It did, it, 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 it served a purpose, it went okay. But you know what? 
I was thinking, oh my God, bloody hell, what's happened? I've got to change my talk, but you know, it works out okay. That is incredible. Well, I will make sure I put your link below as well. Thank, thank you, you so much, Tessie. Love to you. And thank you. No, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Before I let you go, mm -hmm. do you have one quote, an anecdote or something in a nutshell that you would share which spreads positivity that keeps you going? I um, Yeah, so I've done a few for um, Shelley last night, actually, which was a bit phenomenal. And um, to me, I think it's about actually more than ever um, I've smashed a glass ceiling, it's become a floor for the next generation and we all have a moral responsibility to make sure that we pull women up and undo the shackles of social, economic and all the things that hold women back and um, make sure that they get a seat at the table. I want to be the woman who everyone looks at and thinks actually do you know what she gives me a seat at the table because that's what I want my legacy to be. It's not about awards and accolades and you know, you can collect those things and they're brilliant and, they're, and I'm grateful for all of those. But actually, you know what, I'm following my life purpose, my dharma, and I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful to God for an, an amazing life. And I've never felt like I've worked a day in my life because I'm following my passion and I'm just so blessed and so grateful. So thank you, Tessie, and thank you to everyone. Well, thank you so, so much. And thank you for making sure that people get the seat at the table. Uh, I really appreciate it. And if you are listening here right now to this Zoom o'clock and you want a seat at the table where you're working in, what you find interesting, what you find absolutely crucial for your society, please get in touch with Mandy. She's definitely the woman for you, the change maker. Um, so thank you so much, Mandy, for your time. And thank you, Tessie. Offline a little bit more. Brilliant. Thank you, Tessie. God bless you. Thank you.